Yeah. All right, guys, focus all day on what... Logan, play of Logan. Double right motion, lead draw right. Double right, double right, belly left, belly left. 18! 18! Scoop, scoop! Good, good, good. Level, stay level, stay level. 
Double left. Belly right. Double left. Belly right. AP! combo that you hear usually that's an upfront game a pass rush game it's going to be a text and an exit the outside edge rusher on the left is going to come underneath on the right the outside guy is going to loop around lynch definitely a holding there on pain and the flag comes in that will be i did not mean to touch the flags Yep, spot foul, spot's good. The foul was here downfield, right? Defense number 18. Penalty is the first down at the spot of the foul. Donald Payne is asked to cover a lot. You heard him say, I did not mean to touch him. Well, by rule, if you have a twist or a turn of a receiver, it's going to be a penalty. He plays inside linebacker, but this defense requires him to cover receivers often. And so coverage has to be big for Donald Payne. He has to be better with his hands. Orlando on the opening drives. They fizzle after that. Lynch will keep again, cutting it up, will not be able to elude number 53, Darnell Sankey out of Sacramento State. Some of the talk you hear is Xavion Furcron, the center, communicating. Inside pressure, Lynch stands tall and on the money, connecting to Logan Corner out of Oklahoma State. Logan Carter Double right, to... Mojo, draw right. Double right, Mojo, draw right. And these words are simple. You hear double right, that's the formation. But then that draw right, it's going to be a, a, a draw to the running back, yep. to Jermaine Martin. Martin, 4.7 yards per carry. <laughs> but this one's going backwards, nowhere to go. Second big play by Sankey. Seven personnel. B, let's go 34, 34, 34. Here we go. A, right, left, motion. Charlie 3, O88, H flat. Block! Yeah! Block! Straight! Straight! Wait, wait, no, no, no! 18! Straight! 
Beck's on the wrong side. Heard the correction from Ford that Morton was lined up on the wrong side. Lynch is going to check down, and it's dropped by Jermaine Morton. A little push afterwards. No flag. Frisco Chet. Here we go. Frisco Chet, uh, 59 choice. Frisco Chet. So third down, Frisco, pass rushers, get up, get, get to the quarterback. That, that's what the jet means in this. Need to get it inside the 10. And we got a whistle and a flag. Play game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Let's go Twins right, Ace, Seattle. Twins right, Ace, Seattle. Ace right. Ace right. Hey, look! Ace! Third and forever from Lynch. Lynch will pull it down and get inside the 20-yard line to make it a more manageable field goal attempt for Jose Borregales. Guardians were moving. Block right. What's up, block right. The tackle for loss certainly set them back. Here is the former Lou Groza Award winner out of Miami, Jose Borregales who's 0 for 2 on the season. This from 35. His shortest opportunity of the year. Up. And good. Borgales gets his first. Orlando strikes first. So three opening drives, three scores for Robert Ford and company. That's it? Yeah. Progressive's home quote explorer makes it easy to. Eight teams in the XFL spread throughout the country with the North Division as far north as the Pacific Northwest and Seattle. They got a big win last night against Vegas, D.C., 3-0 to start the year, and the South, Arlington, San Antonio, and Houston out of the great state of Texas. Let's catch up with Taylor McGregor and Paxton Lynch. Thank you. Some design QB runs in there, a new wrinkle. How did that help open up the offense on that first drive? Yeah, we're just trying to do whatever we can to keep our offense on the field and drive. We've been starting the games off good, but the problem is, is just sustaining that focus and, and driving the ball down the field. A lot of moving parts on the offensive line. What did you notice about the chemistry in that limited sample size right there? Yeah, it's been good, but like I said, the first two games we've been scoring on the opening drives, the problem is, is just sustaining that focus and staying on the field for our defense and letting our defense rest. So that's, that's what our goal is for this week. Thank you. Lowell? And Paxton Lynch, despite the struggles offensively, every time you see a sideline interview with him, handles it as well as you possibly can. Arlington with the return just north of the 25. And here's Kyle Sloter out of Northern Colorado getting the start. His offensive coordinator, John Hayes, in the booth for the first time this season. Early carry for Davion Smith out of Michigan. Jared Willis with the stop two yards. Let's go. Steer two. Steer two. Come on, baby. Go double. Go double. Yeah. <laughs> 
quick pass Sloter to Tyler Vaughns and a couple more yards Vaughns one of the all time leading receivers from USC. Let's go Z short to jet Z drive F sale still in cheetah. Uh, 44. Brock. Single. Yeah. Go, go, go. Sloter hit as he throws. He was looking for Jordan Smallwood and a flag. Let's go pull three. Pull three. Chain two. Double right. Double right. Now back up. Back up. D tackle. Spots here. 44. Penalties. First down. Should be double. They should remember double. And that's a P.I. on Terrence Plummer. Terrence Plummer, he's supposed to, he, he, so once you see the receiver coming across, you have to anticipate that he's going to keep on going. Oh, come on, man, come back down. And these are the little things that have driven Terrell Buckley nuts in the early start of the season, the unforced mistakes. Remember last week, eight first half penalties, 14 overall. That's what's hurting this team. 44, 44. to the ground and Davion Smith no Keith Ford who was released by Arlington this week got over invert three state over invert three state and this is big with Davion Smith limping off the field <laughs> Kenneth Farrell with his first carry for the Arlington Renegades this season. Former standout from Houston. is going to be close to the sticks looking for Brandon Arcanada. That's going to be fourth down. Hey, fourth. The Arlington fans want Bob Stoops to go for this. Well, you realize that if you punt it right now, this team is thinking about field position. We remember last week all the penalties for Arlington and even some of the miss, missed opportunities in the special teams game. They're trying to win the special teams battle, the field position battle, which is why you punt here. Marquette King, the punter, former All-Pro in the NFL. Flag before the kick. Justin Rogers from inside the 10. Rogers upended at about the 17. Have legal formation on the kicking team, so we can either tack that on or free kick. So what do you want to do? Tack it on from the 18 to the 23, or re-kick. He wants to re-kick. Illegal formation on the uh, kicking team. This five-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. It was fourth down. So as we wait for everybody to get reset, let's explain our scoreboard here. You will see the three dashes below the teams. Those are the timeouts remaining. Under that are the challenges. You have one challenge a game. You need one timeout available to make that challenge, and you can challenge anything, including penalties. You'll see the spread, Arlington favored by eight, and then the total, the over-under, is at 37. One of the tough parts about punting again 
and covering again is that these guys are tired. And so you wonder, why would Terrell Buckley want that ball repunted? Maybe you get a better return rather than tacking off the five yards. Already be a better field position to collect his punt. Maybe another yard, but had to work hard for it was Justin Rogers. Orlando says they've got some wrinkles planned for the second offensive drive. We'll see what they look like. Next on Behind the Series. Let me tell you about the great. The XFL is brought to you by Progressive. The right call to protect your home and car. Fitz, it looks like you've been eating well on this trip. Hey, man, when you want to get to know an offensive line, you take the cattle to a trough. Wait till <laughs> halftime. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Injury update for the Renegades running back, Davion Smith, left thigh contusion, Lowell. That's a big one. Arlington really wants to work through their run game. Haven't had a chance because they've trailed early in so many games. That's been their goal. They want to establish the run. They haven't been able to because of the penalties and the turnovers. So outside of opening drives, the Orlando offense has not been good. Back to the ground. Martin tries to take the right side backwards. Let's check in with T-Mac. Thank you. Here with middle linebacker Ter Terrence Plummer. What did you make of that opening drive for your defense? We did what we were supposed to do. We've been prepared for it. We came out physical. We got to maintain that for the rest of the game. Linebackers coach Mark Snyder was talking to you. What did he say? He said, you know, make sure we get our calls, make sure we get everything lined up like we're supposed to. We stay sound. We should be good in this game. So that's going to be my job to help out, and my teammates going to help me with that too. Thank you. Well, Taylor, thank you. Lynch was solid on the first drive. Martin hit from behind. The ball is out. Arlington with their seventh takeaway of the season. But we've got a flag down at the five. Holding on the offense decline, and for the seventh time this season, Arlington grips and rips. This is what this team does. Arlington has won games or got back into games because of forcing turnovers. Number 30, Edmund Ooh. Robinson, he comes out of the stack. What that means is you're rushing the quarterback, now you got to go make a tackle. His eyes are on the ball. Boom, that hit changes everything. Edmund Robinson, former Division II star out of Newberry. It was a seventh round pick by the Vikings. Slaughter with great field position at the 16. Over the middle. That's his main man, Sal Canella. They were one of the most prolific duos in the USFL. <laughs> Absolutely love those looks. 44. And that was the do it all Donald Payne with the recovery. Farrell, full head of steam, down to the five. He'll have enough for the first down. Renegades, this is how they score. Every Touchdown they have this season is a point off a turnover. Either a pick six or after a takeaway, a touchdown. And that is Stavion Smith checking back into the game. And sometimes that becomes your identity. People say, well, Let's these turnovers. Go Let's go jumbo. Let's go strong right 34 duo five. You focus on taking the ball away. It's a skill that can be acquired. Strong right, 34, do a find on the quick, ready? That's 73. Hey, 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 hey. No, no, Left side of the line is Canella. To the ground, Smith, jump cut, chip it away. You're that fudge and that all cross. I form with Nate Becker, the tight end. 
in front of Smith. They'll throw. Slaughter to the end zone, looking for Canella. It was behind. Decision time on fourth down. Sometimes you talk about these plays. You want to get all your big guys in there, but then an all-cross run a passing route. Unfortunately, this was behind Canella, which is why the ball wasn't completed. But it worked as far as Orlando had their big personnel. You heard them say Grizzly in the game. That was set up Taylor Russellino. Russellino, 12 for 14 in his XFL career going back to 2020. 21 yards to get the Renegades on the board. And it is good. We got a tie game at three. If you went with the under, with 33 seconds left in the first quarter, you're feeling great, Sam. Feeling great. One thing that I love is the way that Orlando has started this game. They're not attacking the strengths of Arlington, which is their corners. They're focusing on the run game. Then Arlington doing what they do best, taking the ball away and creating points off of turnovers. All but six of the points this season by the Renegades are points off turnovers. And some of those turnovers have actually been game sealing turnovers. Week one, Devontae Bosby, number 41, had a pick six to seal the win. And then last week, three turnovers in the second quarter kept them in the game. And the main thing for Arlington and Bob Stoops here, they're not in a major deficit early, so they can keep the ground and pound approach. Justin Rogers took a big hit last time. He was back for a return off the punt. See if he gets some room here. Placement is the name of the game for the kickers. Don't want to put this out of bounds. And give the opponent the ball at the 45 yard line. So looking to squeeze this in between the 20 and the goal line. No one can move. Until the ball is caught, this one goes into the end zone. So decent field position here for Orlando. Coming up over on ESPN2 and ESPN Deportes, the San Antonio Brahmas and Houston Roughnecks round out XFL Week 3. Scheduled at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Also available on ESPN+. Plus. And wow, you're talking about Wade Phillips, their defense getting after you, Harris. Ward, 12 sacks, 4 interceptions. That will get it done. Look at the difference. Second most has seven. That's not saying the offensive lines are bad. It's saying how good the Houston edge defenders are. Kelvin Taylor, the running back with Paxton Lynch. And here is the son of the great Fred Taylor. And nothing doing. Stout up front for Arlington. Ford wants Lynch to take this one all the way down and go to the second quarter. And the veteran quarterback will. So Orlando with a good opening drive. It stalled. They settled for a field goal. And then Arlington with their seventh takeaway of the season. They got a field goal. And at the end of one, it's 3-3. Three, three. We're in the XFL's hub city of Arlington, Texas, going into the second quarter, tied up at three. Here's Taylor McGregor. Coach, I just saw you talking to the referees. What were you talking to them about? They, they hold our center on, on a punt. So we're just trying to make sure that they looking at that and we get that call. I know you wanted to clean up penalties and turnovers. How do you fix that in the middle of a game right now? Just keep going. We, we had the one he's hit behind right there, and we're trying to get our line to move up. So they're doing a good job. Thank you. Cole? Orlando has been outscored 36-0 across the second and third quarters through two games. But Coach Buckley showed his team a highlight Look, video on Monday and put a very positive spin on what has been a rough start to the year. Lynch play action. Lynch will go down. Swallowed up. Will Hill was there along with Boonmi Rotimi, who was just signed this week. 
Will Hill lives in the backfield. He had a huge tackle for loss last week. We talked about offensive line. This is Will Hill on the tight end, winning inside. He's a defensive back, but he knows how to live in the backfield, get after quarterbacks, and win his one-on-one. -on -one. Hill, an absolutely great player at Florida. Rochimi out of Old Dominion. Delay. A good defense up the middle by T.J. Barnes, a mountain of a man. And that will bring up the punt. This is Mac Brown to punt. Johnny Townsend was injured on a roughing call last week. Joe Powell back deep. Gunners are not allowed to leave until the punt is off. Powell, big hit, but he takes it to the 45-yard line. And the Renegades with great field position. Okay. 45. We now welcome in Dean Blandino, VP of officiating. Dean, when it comes to the kicking game, what are the rules based around when it comes to the punt returns? Yeah, whether it's punt return or kick return, we really want to incentivize the return, keep the return in the game. So for kickers, don't kick to the boundary, right? The kickoff out of bounds, punt out of bounds, especially inside the 35 is going to be punitive. And that was the goal, right? Keep the returns in the game. Dean, you're killing it. We appreciate the insight. Sloter scrambling and will get positive yards on first down. You can't keep doing this. Can you take field goal steps or two steps or something? What he's saying is the first two kicks, we've seen them go, the kickoffs, been in the end zone. That means the offense, the offense gets better field position at the 35-yard lines. That's why he's saying, hey, we need that inside the 20, but not in the end zone. Back to work for Smith. Hardy gain up the middle. Dean Blandino talked about some of these rules to incentivize returns. Well, one of those rules on the kickoff is if the ball goes into the end zone, that's called a major touchback, the ball comes all the way out to the 35-yard line. So you have to kick it, whether it wind or, or what have you, it has to be in the field of play. Arlington 0 for 2 on third down. Empty for Kyle Sloter out of Northern Colorado making his first XFL start. Tight window secured by the former Washington State Cougar, Brandon Arcanada. Brandon Arcanado out of Washington State. He tied the single season record at Washington State with 700 yard receiving games. 78 catches in his final year. You want to take a guess how many he had before that? I don't know. Four. <laughs> Definition of a breakout year. 46. Here's Smith. And now Arlington starting to lean into that Orlando front seven. This is their style of play. Steer two. Steer two. Gun double right. Steer two. You hear it? They want to lean on that run game. And Orlando saying, hey. Their goal is to limit 60 yards or less rushing. Smith with five games of NFL experience under his belt. Sloter, quick toss to Adrian Killens. Killens out of UCF. Those all about football in Orlando. Smith. And the Wolverines got the first down. Now we talk about Kyle Sloter and his experience. First start in the XFL. 
He's actually been on the active roster in the NFL with the Lions and Vikings, but did not get in-game experience. He's been on seven different NFL teams, undrafted in 2017, has experience, but hasn't been able to get on the field. Sloter. He's an athlete throwing on the run, the comeback, and that was well out of bounds and a flag. 21. Your flag good? Flag good? Is your flag good? 21 of the defense. Penalties, a first down at the spot. 17. Karina, we go with this spot. Now we talked about challenges. This is a play that Terrell Buckley could challenge. Single 40. Single 40. To see if that actually was a PI. Into traffic and Orlando stands on a first and 10. So you're that naked call. It's going to be a naked boot. Fake run. He's going to run out. No blockers in front of him. Sloter was a kick returner and punt returner before taking over a quarterback in college. He's got a man in his face. Sloter, tough angle. He's got his go-to man, Sal Canella, out of Auburn. Let's go. Let's go, Balboa. Let's go, Balboa. Let's go, Balboa. Canella led the USFL tight ends in receiving yards when Sloter was his quarterback. Smith, not much going on first down. Stay on it. Come on, come on. Whoa, 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 sir. Say, say, stop holding him. Get your freaking hands off of him. Fourth and one. All the tight ends in for Arlington. Smith hitting the backfield. Ball is out. Still out. And it's going to be whistled at the 10 yard line with no recovery. Let's go, baby. You got to go. Jacoby Jones. Two sacks in week one, and a huge force fumble here in the red zone. The former Texas Longhorn with the biggest defensive play in this game for Orlando. And it started with Savion Patton, number 88, winning on the inside. Then Jacoby Jones getting off a block and knocking the ball loose. Once again, not turnovers, you're taking the ball away. Orlando, they've been down, but showing here in Arlington, certainly not out. Extreme on Hulu. Welcome back to Orlando. Let's bring in Dean Blandino. Dean, can you clean up what we just saw with fourth down and the fourth fumble? Yeah, remember, on fourth down or in the last two minutes of the half, there's a rule, either a fourth down fumble or two minute. Only the fumbling player can recover in advance. And since number 77 for Arlington recovered, he wasn't the fumbling player. It comes back to that spot. The play is blown dead. That's why the ball is at the 10. Dean, thank you so much. We appreciate it. You got it. And Jacoby Jones was one of the players that T-Buck pointed out coming into this game. He's been a force defensively. He's had limited reps, but every time he's gotten in the game, he's made plays, getting sacks, affecting the quarterback, tackles in the run game. That's what this team has been looking for. Jermaine Martin, first down. That's a solid gain. Belly right. 
You hear that word belly again. And inside zone, inside run. This offense is leaning on the run game, not attacking the outside. Back to Morton. And Edmund Robinson, who had the earlier forced fumble, got there quickly. What starts to happen is the defense is adjust. Third and five for the Guardians, who are 0-2 on third down. Lynch. Oh, big thud! Charleston Rambo brought it in, but Donald Payne made him pay. Move the chains anyways. What's interesting about that play, yes, it's a great catch, but what, it's the protection. We have not seen this kind of protection for Paxton Lynch in either of the last two weeks. So some of the changes that we've seen for this offensive line have been effective early on. And Robert Ford, the OC, told us shorter and easier passes for Lynch this week. 29. Lynch low, looked like it hit the turf incomplete to Latimer. One of the things you hear, you hear 53, 29. That's the center. Press right. Calling out who the, that, who, who's the Mike linebacker? Which way am I sliding to? Which way am I going? Who am I going to block? That helps the entire offensive line. And until it's inside two minutes and a half, the clock runs after incompletions as Eli Rogers on the ended round slips one tackle, gets a couple of yards. So you see the time ticking away, even out of bounds. You look at the over-under, and you took under, and you wish that clock would stop. Hey, 29. Go on, Look. Lynch out of breath calling the plays. Former first rounder by the Broncos, and we could have, we will have a timeout. Clock was winding down. Help Prior to the expiration of the play clock, timeout, Arlington, first of the half. Wow, so it's Arlington with the timeout. Well, one thing to note, and this may not be why Arlington called the timeout, but keep that play you just saw in the back of your mind because in the XFL, Double passes are allowed. You could have that pass, and another Ooh. pass could come after that. Could be a setup for something later. I don't think we've seen that yet this year. What's your favorite part of a Kit Kat? Arlington went for it on fourth and one at the 10-yard line. Orlando got a forced fumble from Jacoby Jones, trying to turn this into points, but facing a third and nine. Lynch with time behind Rodgers. Did Rodgers make the catch? He did. Eli Rodgers, former Pittsburgh Steeler with a gain of 19. So what that means, base, you're going to get your three down linemen. You see those big guys coming in. Tight Sam, the Sam linebacker, which is to the tight end, is going to blitz off the edge. Me, that Sam says me, I'm blitzing. 33, you're in cover three. Lynch feels the pressure. He's got an open man. Connecting to Lance Lenore, joined the team before the last game against San Antonio. That's his first catch in the XFL. Out of Western Illinois.
Sam, is this the best rhythm we've seen Paxton Lynch in this season? Night and day. What we're seeing right now is, is night and day from what we've seen the first two weeks. He has time in the pocket to, 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 to make plays. Pressure, blindside, he felt it, and it's on the money to Charleston Rambo. The all ACCer from the U. See, he felt the pressure, so Paxton Lynch, he knows it's coming, gets the ball out quick, and then Rambo makes the catch. But what's happening is he, he feels protected so his feet can be calmer in the pocket. Should point out, started his career with Bob Stoops at OU. Delay to Martin. Left side, Martin. And we got a flag coming in. Arlington saying it's a hold on Orlando. Holding. 59 on the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty still. First down. That's the center, Zabion Furcron. And I know this is making Terrell Buckley's blood boil. But he has to be happy with the changes on the offensive line, the time that his quarterbacks have in the pocket. That has to be pleasing him. I understand the penalties, but this long sustained drive is the first one we've seen past the first series in either of the last two games. They made changes on the offensive line. They brought Brett Boyko in out of UNLV. He gets to start at left tackle. It allows him to move Abdul Beecham, number 77, from left tackle to right tackle, where he's more comfortable. First and 20. Quick pass by Lynch, and that's back to Rambo. Fitz, what do you got? Lowell, this line on this game opened at Arlington minus eight. It is now down to Arlington minus three and a half to four at Caesar Sportsbook. And now it's down to two and a half, I'm told. So, Sacha, I wonder with this offense right now, the communication from offensive coordinator Robert Ford not going through Shane Matthews and just a direct communication now, how that's kind of streamlined the, the play calling here for Orlando. Yes, and if you're listening, you're saying, man, these play calls don't sound the same as the first two weeks. To Martin, following the big boys on the left side, and the ball is stripped. Arlington says they've got it, and they do. Give them another eight takeaways for the Renegades defense. If we like averages, but this is the law of averages. They had three in week one, three in week two. They say turnovers, takeaways, they come in bunches. Watch this ball get knocked out and recovered. Arlington has won games this way, and sometimes if you don't have a rhythm offensively or maybe even defensively, you find ways to make plays. That, that ball looked like it was knocked out by his own teammate. It was, that was Fred Eloina from Oregon State. His left elbow got into Martin and that knocked the football out. Josiah Coatney recovers. Wow. So Arlington forcing turnovers when they're not even involved in the hit. Sloter, quick strike, that's to Canella. You get it, how, get it how you live. Any way you can get it, you take it. Two-minute warning time. Orlando was driving. They coughed it up. Now there's two minutes for Sloter to find the end zone. Time to We got a tie game here in the second quarter here with Orlando offensive coordinator Robert Ford. You were just breaking down the play on the iPad, that turnover. What did you see? Well, he was, he was just he was a little loose with the football. Only thing that the running back needs to do is hit the hole a little bit quicker. And if we do that, we'll be fine with that particular play. Prior to that, your offense had been in a rhythm. How did they get back into that after that turnover? Well, we, we're moving the ball pretty well. I, I don't think there will be a problem getting back in motion there. Thank you. Well, Ford won three Super Bowls as the tight ends coach here in the Metroplex with the Dallas Cowboys. Two minute now, we go to the college rules in terms of the clock being stopped after first downs and on out of bound plays. Sloter, some RPMs there to Canella, and they are growing more and more comfortable with each other. Arlington has two timeouts to work with. Hey, hey, 
Sloter floating. We got a flag as that throw was long to Arcanada. Fire to the pass, illegal contact, 13 of the defense. This is a five yard penalty with an automatic first down. So that call, obviously, if there's going to be a hole. You can't make contact after five yards. That contact after five yards is going to be an illegal contact five-yard penalty. Sometimes you do that because you're out of position. So you need to move up a little bit if you're going to reroute a receiver. Third Orlando defensive penalty resulting in a first down. Right side pressure, and Sloter's just going to have to spike this one. The first three episodes of the nine-part docuseries Player 54, Chasing the XFL Dream, are available now on ESPN+. Plus. Award-winning director Peter Berg brings you inside the creation of the league and takes an in-depth look at the players and coaches living their dream of playing professional football. To get ESPN+, Plus, go to ESPNplus.com or download the ESPN app. High snap, Davion Smith right up the middle, following the blocks of Cameron Hunt. Let's go, uh, gun double left, three jack, pivots. Number six rat, compete. Backer, lane, backer, cut 80. Cut 84. Cut 80, that means the inside linebacker is going to go to number 80, so they're going to have him double teamed when you see these pivot routes come in. Looking for Tyler Vaughn's incomplete. What do you see in the start? I'm seeing him protecting the football, but also hitting Sal Canella. They had a connection even last year in the USFL, but more importantly, Sal season 11 catches. XFL out of all receivers. He's also third in receiving yards. And that will set up a punt with 104 left. Marquette King lets it fly. No one can leave until the punt is off the foot of the punter, and this one will be at the 15. So 56 seconds. Orlando has all three timeouts. How aggressive do you think they are? Well, they've, but they have not. 11 personnel, one tight end, one running back. They have not been an aggressive team. What you do is first drive, first play, you try to see if you can make a play and then get some momentum to continue that drive. And with ball security issues, that has to be paramount. Quick throw, Latimer lost it. Incomplete pass. Because the thing you don't want to do is give the other team good field position when you're in, we call it the black zone. You're backed okay. up. Here we go. Let's go. Rush, read Tom, 52 straight. Rush, read Tom, 52 straight. Hey, watch the check down on the back. You heard me, Shaq? 52 straight. Right, right. 52 straight. Donald Payne alerting his defense to watch the check down. Take him. As Kelvin Taylor is the running back. Delay. Taylor with some room to run. And that's a gain of eight yards. Let's go here. If you went with the over, I'm sorry. You will be sweating out the second half. 
So you're at super, super techs and one peel. That means whoever's on the edge to the running back is going to peel if the running back releases. You got a man to man. Super techs should be two inside defensive tackles going one way and then and then one guy on the outside looping around. Third down for Lynch to Latimer. Latimer showing the burst out of bounds as well to stop the clock. And he's at the 47 yard line. Gain of 25 for the former Indiana Hoosier. So you hear plays like Super Techs, that's a blitz. You're bringing four, five, even six people. So you're going to have to be one on one, and you have to win your one on one. Latimer knows that. He knows the middle of the field is going to be open. And they had a great connection. But now are you kicking yourself that you didn't use those timeouts? I mean, obviously content just to go on the break knowing they're tied and not trailing. And th that goes with that mentality of being, whether you're being aggressive versus playing it safe. And we've seen this team first couple weeks play it safe. Now they're trying to open up the playbook a little bit more. Coming up over on ESPN2 and ESPN Deportes, the San Antonio Brahmas and Houston Roughnecks rounding out XFL Week 3. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, also available on ESPN+. Plus. First two games of Week 3 have been offensive thrillers. More than 50 points in each game. And now we've got six points total here with these two teams. Sea Dragons, wow. Ben DiNucci on a fourth and short, hooked up with Josh Gordon, the former NFL star, for the game-winning score. And then the defenders, first off, St. Louis tried to come back. They went for the fourth and 15 again, like week one, didn't get it. But man, the crowd in DC, they've established themselves as the best home field advantage in the XFL thus far. We're good. Six seconds for Robert Ford in his Orlando offense. Lynch steps up and is just going to throw this away as he is hit by Sankey. And we got one second on the clock. See the Guardians teammates checking on their quarterback. Surprised that we haven't seen DeAndre Francois at all? I'm not surprised based off how this game is going. We heard from Terrell Buckley, head coach of the Orlando Guardians, that they're still evaluating the quarterbacks. But this offensive line change has, has allowed Paxton Lynch to look more comfortable. And so if you're comfortable, there's nothing to change right now. He's driving his offense down the field, and some turnovers have hurt them. And as Orlando takes a knee here, any doubt this is a win for the Guardians in the first half? No, there's no doubt at all. Orlando, you heard, you heard Robert Ford, offensive coordinator, say, hey, let's take the quarter. Why? Well, historically, we've been great in first quarters. We've struggled in the second and third. So let's get some confidence going. And now we're looking at saying 3-3 three, three at halftime. We've beat ourselves in a couple ways, and it's still tied. So let's find a way to build our confidence back and win this game in the second half. Meanwhile, the quarterback change for Arlington going from Drew Plitt to Kyle Sloter has not led to any touchdown action. We got a lot coming up at the half, including Ian Fitzsimmons taking an entire offensive line out to eat. And that is the OC for Orlando, Robert Ford, talking to his best playmaking threat. And that is the tight end, Cody Latimer. And that brings us to our first half stats brought to you by Progressive. So Orlando, 155 total yards of offense, almost doubling up Arlington, but still only three points to show for it. They're happy about their offense, and, but, but you're going to see the adjustments being made at halftime, meaning, hey, we may not have practiced this, but based off the looks that we're getting from Arlington, we're going to actually change our play to win in a one-on-one. -on -one. So getting your best players in positions to make plays, that, those are the adjustments we're seeing, that you're hearing from Robert Ford and Cody Latimer. Two turnovers for Orlando that has not helped the cause, but they've been able to right this ship with some sudden change defense after that. Arlington has had opportunities. Had the ball inside the 10 early in the game. 
settled for a field goal. Borregales will kick it away. The kicks have been interesting going in this direction as Russellino for Arlington put two in the end zone, which brings the ball out at the 35. This is going to be dangerously short. Killens lets it go all the way back to the end zone. So since it bounced inside the 20, it's not going to be as good of field position for Arlington. They're calling this a minor touchback. So the ball will come out to the 15 yard line. Major touchback it get, is if the oh, ball gets kicked in the end zone. Minor touchback is when it bounces into the end zone after hitting the 20 yard line. So that kick is really as good as you can get for Borregales, but it's dangerous because if that had backspin, and even if it lands inside the 20 and then goes back towards the 25, you're talking about taking over at the 45-yard line. And the team is allowed to move after three seconds of the ball hits the ground. And so all of a sudden, the return team and the kickoff team will start to go get, to, get the ball. Kyle Sloter got the start over Drew Plitt. He's 8 for 11, but only 40 yards. Heavy formation for Davion Smith. Star out of Michigan. Fitz. Well, this game opened and, and then closed around seven and a half, eight at Caesars, at, with Arlington being favored. Right now, it's around three. Hey, Lowell, that's a great middle right now. If you want to play Arlington, it's a five point swing. I'm in. <laughs> the eight point spread, the largest by far that we have seen coming into a game this season. And offenses have been exploding in week three. They've grinded it to a halt here. Nice route, Sloter putting it on the spot to Lawan Winningham, his second catch of the year out of Central Dang. Arkansas. Let's go, wristband 11. 11 day, wristband 11. Now, why are we seeing Hayes in the booth this game? Well, last week he was down on the field. He said, man, I want to be more clinical. I want to get away from all the noise. I'm going to go up in the booth and see if I can dissect the game that way. And we're seeing benefits. Sloter cannot escape the pressure from Terrence Plummer, the UCF Knight with the sack. And one thing that people forget is on the sideline, there's yelling, there's screaming, there's noise, there's, there's all this pressure. Up in the booth, you can be quiet by yourself. You can look at things. You can see more. Hey, over invert three state. Over invert three state. First sack by Orlando in this game. That's now nine sacks allowed on the season by Arlington. Came into this game with only Orlando allowing more. Uh-oh, Smith in trouble. Flex on him. Why don't you, Terrence Smith? The Florida State Seminole, a guy with 38 career tackles in the NFL, makes a stop. He's been playing well all season, and the coach has pointed out that he's one of the leaders on this team, even amidst the two-game loss. This is an entirely different Orlando team. The struggles of the first two weeks are behind them. Sloter playing it safe with Smith. Smith to the 30-yard line where he's brought down by Matt Elam, the former Florida Gator and NFL star. You heard Tony Carter, defensive coordinator, say to Matt Elam on that last play with the seconds waning down, watch the crack, watch the crack. That's the difference in the XFL. Coaches can talk to players all the way down to, to the ball is snapped. And not just one player like it is in the NFL. They have multiple players have headsets that they can hear from. The big leg of Marquette King on a line. Want to keep this one out of the end zone. But it's going to go into the end zone, so we're out at the 35. Let's take a look at today's game flow brought to you by Progressive. Hey, I'd like to play. You hear me? Block right. Block right. Hey, when I'm in, Will, I can give him the call. I ain't got it. Hey, give me a call. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Donald Payne, that man is a tackling machine out of Stetson, three-time All-American on the FCS level. He had 538 tackles in his career. He had 30 tackles in one game. <laughs> one game. Orlando on the ground. Good second effort there by Kelvin Taylor. Let's check in with Taylor McGregor. I'm here with Keith Wagner, offensive line coach for Orlando. What about the adjustments you guys made on the line this week have worked? Well, we brought in another player, and um, that's what we've been doing. We've just been upgrading our talent. You know, the, the guys that we took early, you know, they were good players, but, you know, we needed to upgrade, so we took uh, Brett Boss, uh, Boyko, who played in the NFL for three years, and he's a starting left tackle, and he's really solidified that spot right now. How do you feel like it's changed Lynch's pocket presence? I think a lot of times because now he can be confident to <laughs> sit back there and he doesn't have uh -oh. to worry about guys being on him right now. I think that's given him a lot more confidence to set his feet and throw because he's really a big-time quarterback. Thanks, Coach. Bull? In a big body at 6'7", 244, and putting all of that into Shakur Brown and Joe Powell. That's been a wrinkle we've seen more. The legs. Yeah, he's kept the ball more. Remember, he's a first-round pick. He's big. He's tall. He's long. He hasn't used his legs as much this season. Now he's getting able to do it. 22 yards on the ground for Paxton Lynch. Now showing the arm. Good blitz pickup there by Taylor to keep Lynch clean. I give that man credit. Frisco. Oh. Oh, oh. Here we go. Let's go. Load strong. Sting blue. Load strong. Jay Load Hayes. Strong. Sting blue. Sting blue. Has coordinated a terrific game. His run against D. Forcing two more turnovers. Toss. And a solid run by Dedrick Thomas. Hey. Let's check it. Did you hear that? We got a check? What was that? So it sounds like on the defense they're saying, hey, if we have this blue call, which it looks like it's a cover two, and we have this formation, a condensed formation, meaning all the receivers are tight, we need to check out of this cover two and get someone else down in the box. Orlando has converted their last three on third down. Lynch off the back foot. That's his go-to man, Cody Latimer. They were twice neighbors in Denver when they played for the Broncos. And many of these calls, going back to that last call, that check blue, it has a, it has a, it, it has a check based off of formation. 15 players on each team get the communication devices. It's up to the teams to determine who will wear them in their helmets. This week, Orlando has decided every receiver on the roster will get a headset. Because there's a lot of newness with this offense. Lynch hit hard, brought down. Darnell Sankey and Josiah Coatney are there. Sankey out of Sacramento State. One of the issues with trying to take a shot downfield is that you have to have protection. You see running back and you see tight end going over to block, but they weren't able to keep the protection long enough to get the shot downfield. And Will Clark out of West Virginia, the guy they call Pops, had some of that early pressure as well. Over the middle, nearly picked off. It was right in the bread basket for Sankey. You want, you want mustard? That went right through the hands. That would have been takeaway number nine on the year. Third and 17, do you play this like you've got two plays? Makes it a little more interesting with the dynamics of the punt, not wanting it to go into the end zone. And let them take over on the 35, the lofted pass for Rodgers. He was covered downfield by Shakur Brown.
Damn. <laughs> I'm gonna tag you one, baby. Come on, come on. Get up. Defensive slug fest. That man has his defense helping him bring in a new year. Celebrated his birthday on Friday. He did, coaching alongside his brother, John, at offensive coordinator. Killens calling for the fair catch. There's contact as well. That's going to be a flag as Killens called for the fair catch, clearly. After the play was over, I had personal foul, unnecessary roughness, kicking team number 80. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, kicking team number 80. 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the play. It's automatic first down. Timeout on the field. So Jay Hayes has the defense working. His bro John has to get the offense cooking. It's Saturday prime time. Bucks Warriors on ABC. Welcome back to Arlington 3-3 here in the third quarter. The Orlando Guardians were in the headlines they did not want to be in this week when it was reported by multiple outlets that their backup quarterback, Quentin Dormady, was sharing his team's plays with the opposition. None of this has been confirmed, but we do want to share with you what we know. He was released by his team on Friday, then reinstated yesterday, that was Saturday, by the XFL, and he is currently on the reserve list and inactive in today's game. The XFL put out a statement yesterday saying that the league is actively reviewing a personnel issue regarding a player on the Orlando Guardians who was released from the team yesterday afternoon. Additional information on this situation was brought to the attention of the league overnight and the league has reinstated the player while it conducts a formal investigation into this issue. The situation is under review and we will share more details regarding the findings as appropriate. We did ask the Guardians to comment and they said the league is handling it guys. The only thing to Buckley could add is that he's been adamant about having a multi quarterback system and Dormady did not want to be part of that approach aggressive tackle for the Guardians defense here and they're showing some fight Lakia Henry with the stop so with all these distractions what do you think about the job that Buckley has done I've been impressed by how efficient his team has played. We heard a lot of one play at a time mentality, and that's what they're doing. They're not worrying about the outcome. They're worrying about what they do on this next play. Buckley also knows the camera showed him. Audio picked him up, visibly frustrated. Told us as Farrell gets the carry, he's a competitor, and that's going to come out during games. There was even a moment with Eli Rogers on the sideline where Rogers said, I'm not coming out. And Buckley responded to that. They found out after the game, though, that Rogers was talking to himself, <laughs> trying to motivate himself. And they cleared that air. You were Tony Carter saying outside leverage. That rap means you're going to have a, a defender on the inside. Everyone stay outside. You have help on the inside. Third and six for Kyle Sloter. Clean block pocket and it's tipped and eventually swatted down by Balin Buchanan, son of the former NFL great Ray Buchanan. Sometimes if you can't get to the quarterback, you can get your hands up. You see Savion Patton, I believe that's T. Gray Scales on the other that? side, getting their hands up and deflecting the ball. Even if you don't get a sack, there are ways to affect the game defensively. Scales. With five games under his belt in the NFL, last in 2021 with the Steelers. King will punt, lets it rip from the 30. Last time in, it was into the end zone, which Orlando got great field position at the 35. This a little bit better. And about the 26 for Justin Rogers. Under crowd, you're feeling great. You're feeling really good with six total points. Arby's new steakhouse. You all appreciate it. 
A first three games of week three have been bonkers. Let's get another one coming up over on ESPN2 and ESPN Deportes. San Antonio Brahmas and Houston Roughnecks routing out the third week. Eight Eastern, five Pacific. Also available on ESPN+. Plus. This is why it's so significant. Take a look at the XFL standings. Look at the South. Orlando. For everything they've been through, they're 0-2. If they can find a way to win here, they get to 1-2. And, and if Houston, the favorite, beats San Antonio, all of a sudden, you get Arlington, San Antonio, and Orlando all at 1-2. And, and the Guardians are right there in that playoff mix. And, Sam, it's early. It is early. Here's Paxton Lynch back to work. Good time working downfield. Good adjustment, and the catch is made by Jalen Smith. He was signed on Wednesday. The former Louisville Cardinal making an instant impact. I've been so impressed by this offensive line. And yes, we're going to talk about Paxton Lynch, but specifically Abdul Beecham moving over to right tackle. He looks a lot more comfortable in his sets giving his quarterback time to make a pass. But when you break the 50, this is where dreams go to die. Both offenses have struggled when breaking midfield. Lynch, quick toss to Thomas. Thomas, two men beat, three. Big hit, he's still up. Dedrick Thomas with the effort of the afternoon, 11 yards, and three dudes juked out. That, that was that fake toss we saw earlier, then Dedrick Thomas doing the rest. You're seeing defenders drop their heads. That, if you're not looking at the guy, you cannot tackle the man. Keep your head up to make the tackle. Before he started Mississippi State, Dedrick Thomas picked up the nickname Sweet Feet. And we see why. Back to the ground. Sankey with the stop. We've said his name a lot. Orlando has not scored a point in the second or third quarter this season coming into the game. Lynch dumped down to Taylor. Taylor with a nice move inside. Uh oh, up ended. And that is Darnell Sankey from Sacramento State once again. And a quarterback sneak here on third and short. The spot is going to be close for Paxton Lynch. Let's see what we got. So it looks like it's short. The red hat, the ball spotter, is marking Paxton Lynch short. Here we go, fourth down. Lynch gets it this time easily. <laughs> hear those big nasties Could in the you middle. Hear <laughs> so we got the center Xavier on Furkron mic'd up. Let's go. B18. 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 He worked for that first down. That man out of Southern Illinois. Orlando has to find something extra here. Comeback incomplete as Lenore was the intended receiver. Hey, right here. Tank left, power right. Tank left, power right. All right, let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Ozzy, 59 State. Ozzy, 59 State. Power right, so you believe it's going to be a power to the right side, pulling the left guard and running it behind the tight end to the right side of the ball. Taylor with the carry. Taylor with a good initial burst. He's got it at the 20-yard line. We'll set up a third and manageable. Will Hill calling Schooler there with the stops. Let's go level personnel. Level personnel. Twins right, scat right, wide option five. So why that tight end is going to have an option route. Can go inside, can go outside. That tight end is Cody Latimer. 
Inside for Lattimore. Lynch has him. Lattimore still up inside the five. And they call that play based off what's the leverage of the defense. If the defender is playing you outside, you could stick them and then go inside. If it's going to be a zone, then you know you're going to sit down in the zone. Latimer's looking for that zone to sit in. Arlington trying to bow up. By the way, Sacho, Marvin Sanders, quarterback coach for Arlington, was screaming at his guys, get inside, get inside. Where they get beat? Inside. Inside. Lynch looking for Dedrick Thomas. Thomas didn't see it. And that's going to bring us to the fourth quarter. Another great opportunity for Paxton Lynch and Orlando. They've got to cash in inside the five. Get ready for the best. chance for a second chance. Rediscovered, revitalized, reborn. And this is what you want. Game on the line going into the fourth quarter. Two teams trying to live the dream and leaving everything out there to help them get there. Orlando, 0-2, inside the five. Robert Ford trying to draw up a gym. Lynch, the draw, Lynch is in. Guardians take the lead. That six, seven frame from Paxton Lynch means a lot. What's gonna mean more, you're gonna go for one, two, or go for three on this conversion. And keep in mind, Orlando has not converted an extra point this season. They are 0 for four. So you pick your yard line and the hash. One point from the two yard line, two points from the five, three points, the June Jones special from the 10. This will be a one, one point conversion here. Inside zone, you heard them say, that's what that Buffalo call is. Now you got a tight end. It's gonna be an inside run. You think you can get two yards on this run. Taylor, the running back. Lynch backing up, still up, directing traffic, and will be dropped. Guardians 0 for 5 on extra points this season. Fake the inside zone, go for the pass. Unfortunately, it did not work out. Now, six point game. What does Arlington do to come back? Colin Schooler's all over it. Gets the takedown. And Colin Schooler made a lot of plays like that at Arizona and Texas Tech. And we saw this more in his days with the Memphis Tigers. Lynch with the run game. Former first round pick to the Denver Broncos. Big bodied quarterback. Here's T Mac. Thank you. Another design QB run. We've been seeing them all day. How do you feel like that has impacted what your offense has been able to do today? Yeah, it feels good. We've done a good job staying locked in. Nobody's lost focus. We've continued to push the ball down the field. Just, you know, kind of hurt ourselves with a couple turnovers and penalties. But when we don't hurt ourselves, it always ends up in points. How have the adjustments to the offensive line impacted the way that you feel back there? I feel good. We knew we just had to continue to work through things. Every single one of us was making mistakes on offense. We just continued to get better each week, and that's what we're continuing to do. Thanks, Paxton. Yep. Lowell? Kill it's like. And he sounded like this even in the in the midst of rotation and not playing well early on and having someone else being a quarterback. Now the pressure shifts to Kyle Sloter. Sloter out of northern Colorado. Been active in the NFL with the Lions and Vikings, but no game experience. This is first XFL start. Come back and Vaughn's falls down. No flag. 
FX Snowfall is back for its sixth and final season where a few threatens to destroy the Saint family every Wednesday at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on FX, also streaming on Hulu. Sam, how does Slaughter get going with the offense here? It takes momentum, and I think it takes Sal Canella, who has 11 catches on the season, had another one, another two or three so far today. They have a connection. He's got to get back to his go-to. Short pass to Arcanada. And Arlington, the fan base, they've showed up on a beautiful day. Some feelings of unease right now. We know that's what Stoops is feeling as well. Look at that guy. You hear him saying that's a kicker ball. They have the wrong ball spotted, right? They have different balls that are going to kick it or run a play. That was a kicker ball, so the clock's going to be lifted up again. We got a great look with Ian Fitzsimmons yesterday on how the quarterback selects the footballs they use in the game. And talk about precision. Slaughter. Not precise there, but a flag. Tyler Vaughn's, there was contact with Balaam Buchanan. Let's see. 20 defensive pass interference. 20 in the defense. Penalty is first down at the spot of the foul. Fitz, how detailed was Slaughter picking the game balls yesterday? Well, this is not going to surprise Sam Macho, a former linebacker, right? But, I mean, quarterbacks are very picky when it comes to the footballs. He had 30 balls that he was testing out to pick eight to use during this game, and he was so detailed. The first one he threw away, I didn't feel a difference between that one and the one he called game ball one. So quarterbacks, as Plitt is just walking by me right now, they are they're picky like pitchers when it comes to a baseball, when it comes to the footballs they're going to use during a game. And he was seeing differences in the dimples. Oh, yeah. The ball. Dude, it was insane, man. Again, the first one he threw away, I didn't feel a difference between the one he called, uh, you know, Ball one, the one that he, that his favorite football. I did not feel a difference. Well, it was funny because Fitzy threw the ball to me and said, now, do you feel anything? <laughs> and I could, I didn't know which one he had said yes, which one he had said no to. And I tried to figure it out. I could not figure it out. And I, I do have to say, I think it was a little mental, but hey, if it works, it works. Well, well you cover baseball all the time, T-Mac. You yeah. know how pitchers are with baseballs. So, oh, yeah, that's why we see pitchers throwing out balls at an all-time rate right now. But somehow he knew that was a kicking ball. Whether he saw the marking or just by feel, he knew something was off. Sloter, just with one full season under his belt in college at the quarterback spot at Northern Colorado after transferring from Southern Miss, he was playing kick returner and receiver before getting a shot at quarterback. This is what Arlington has wanted to do. They haven't had the chance because they've trailed by so much. Yeah, and Slaughter, Slaughter had 9,000 yards of offense in, 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 in high school, 6,000 passing, 3,000 rushing. Things just didn't work out in college. His team was 0-12, new coaching staff. Now he's trying to find the right team while he's finding the right ball. But did you see the arm on the right side of the screen? Taylor McGregor? throwing dimes <laughs> 13 minutes left game on the line Orlando up by six Smith left side sheds a couple of tackles and this will set up a third in short that's the bread and butter for, for this Arlington Renegades offense a stretch to the left or right the outside linebackers have to win against tight ends if you blocked one on one the play's always going to get six seven yards when the player is down, Gerald Willis, defensive tackle out of Miami. It's right now. FX's Snowfall, all new Wednesdays at 10 on FX, stream on Hulu. Welcome back to Arlington. Take a look at the bottom left part of your screen. You'll see there's no red dash under Orlando. VP of officiating, Dean Blandino. Please explain why. 
Yeah, so we had a challenge. Remember, the coaches can challenge any officiating decision. We had a flag down for defensive pass interference that resulted in a first down for Arlington. And, uh, and Coach Buckley challenged that it was not. We had early contact. I was able to confirm that the contact occurred before the ball arrived, playing through the back, and it was a good call for pass interference. So Orlando loses the challenge, and they, are, they charge one timeout. Team, thank you. You got it. And that was Balin Buchanan with that early contact. That seemed pretty clear. Yeah, I mean, if you're the, from from this angle, it did it didn't look early. But if you have all the different angles, you say, well, yeah, the contact's early, and any early contact equals pass interference. Huge third and one. And another sneak this time by Sloter. He's got plenty yardage to move the chains. Following Cameron Hunt, his center who's mic'd up. So when you're watching at home and you just hear the audio completely drop, that means someone has said a naughty word. <laughs> Slaughter pressured, and he is down. Gerald Willis, who was hurt just a moment ago, comes back in with the sack. Sometimes we call this a crush rush. You see Gerald Willis push, and also Stansley Maponga on the outside. Just go right down the middle and collapse the pocket. Now the quarterback doesn't feel comfortable. There's nowhere to go. He tries to step up. You disengage and get a sack. And that is Willis on Horton. So two guys with NFL experience going at it. Quick pass to Vaughns. Vaughns cuts inside. Reversing field. Canella with the block. Vaughns a little cut. And he's got it at the 46-yard line. Positive play. One thing we heard from the Orlando Guardians yesterday, they said we want everyone to run to the ball. You see Mapanga running to the ball. Everyone on that defense, Murphy running to the ball. Even if you miss the tackle, Plummer running to the ball. One of your players is going to make, make that tackle. 222 catches in his career at USC. That's number three all time. Hey, 12, 12. Fence, 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 fence. Third down. Slaughter over the middle. Wide open to Caleb Vander Esch. You know that name here, the Metroplex. His cousin, Leighton Vander Esch. Correct, correct. 6'1, 210 out of South Dakota. Finding this, the soft spot in the zone and making the grab. Canella to the 30. The Auburn Tiger making his fifth catch of the afternoon. Hey, Lowell Sacho, also, Canella wouldn't even be on this team if it wasn't for Kyle Sloter. They were teammates in the USFL last year, and Canella's name wasn't on the draftable list. Sloter talked him into it. Here he is leading this team in receptions right now. Leading the XFL tight ends in receptions and yards. Second and three for Sloter. His first XFL start. Back to Van Der Esch. Van Der Esch. First down. He was cut from the St. Louis Battlehawks roster in training camp. Now he's getting his spot and his chance with the Renegades. Arlington, the eight point favorite. The total probably out of the question. And that is Kenneth Farrow falling forward. This is the NFL style when it comes to down by contact. So we saw Farrell, the knee touched 
but he is knocked down until he's touched by an opponent. Hey, we going feel stacks, fire zone, feel stacks, fire zone, match it, match it, match it. Match it. See, see it here, that fire zone. It means it's going to be a five man pressure. Match it. Hey, when these receivers cross. No, you don't match it, Mike. Sell route, sell route, Mike. Slow to right side, Vaughn's end zone. Taking the contact, but staying up to celebrate. Fight on Tyler Vaughn's. So what happened on that play, you're going to see Farrell release. Well, in a fire zone, you usually have a player that's over number three. Farrell's a number three receiver, number two on the weak side. So the, not, the top, not the receiver, but the next receiver in. Well, as soon as that person releases, you see... Terrence Smith has to release from that zone, and then there's a wide open play for Vaughn's. And Arlington will elect to go for the one point conversion from the two yard line. For the lead. Smith, flag on the play. Smith keeps fighting. He's in the end zone. We'll have to wait to see the result of the penalty flag. So too many players on the field for Orlando. And Arlington has taken the lead. Wow, well, it didn't matter how many dudes you're putting out there. It's stopping Davion Smith there. This is what it's about. Competition at its finest. Tyler Vaughns, the USC Trojan, taking the hit. And the first XFL touchdown pass by Kyle Sloter. Arlington with the lead. He's in. Did they have, did they have too many guys, maybe? Three, six, seven. 7.58 to go in this game with Renegades lead by one now. And um, well, here was Renegades quarterback Kyle Sloter. Kyle, take us on, on that on that drive where you hit Vaughn's for a big touchdown. Take us onto the field. Yeah, so they've been playing a lot of single high. We got a, a single high look. Thought that uh, if we sprayed a, a skinny, we'd be able to hit that seam. They've been giving it to us. So just wanted to... Uh, Told him to come in a little bit tighter than what we normally are at. Brought him in tight, got him to spray it, look the safety off, threw it to Tyler. He made the rest happen. Hell of a play. Appreciate Lowell, Sacho. Thank you so much. Justin Rogers at the 15. Rogers going to be tripped up, and a flag is down at the 25. Come hey, real quick, Chris. make some sense of what we, we just heard from Sloter. I got 36 Holding. tackle. Yeah, take receiving team. 26. So Sam, we're going to have a hold. So when you talk about when they we're said getting that line. skinny, spraying the skinny, that means getting that running back out, and then all of a sudden that skinny post, move your receiver inside, that's the weak spot of a fire zone, that skinny post. Like I said, turn is that return. inside? Holding. Number 36 of the return team. This is a 10 yard penalty. It will be first and 10. If that inside linebacker has the running back in the backfield, he can stay in that vicinity and keep that ball from being thrown. But all of a sudden, that running back releases. You have to go. The ball has to come out fast. Like you said, he looks off the safety. He's looking in the middle of the field. Get that route a little bit tighter for the touchdown. Sloter and Lynch both coming off their best drives of the afternoon. 7.51. It's a one-point Arlington lead. Play action for Lynch. He's used the legs all day. He's going to do it again. Lynch to the 20. Good pickup on first down. First three episodes of the nine-part docuseries, Player 54, Chasing the XFL Dream, are available now on ESPN+. Award-winning director Peter Berg brings you inside the creation of the league and takes an in-depth look at the players and coaches living their dream of playing professional football. To get ESPN+, Plus, go to ESPNplus.com or download the ESPN app. We know drives like this, Paxton Lynch, thankful for his opportunity, thinking about getting back to the NFL, where it was a first-round pick by the Broncos. Carried by Taylor, first down for the Guardians. And to your point earlier, Lowell. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Toby Hack, 3-6. Oh, oh, let's go, go, Lash. 56, Lash. Rock over there. 18. Oh, what?
Lynch over the middle. Caught by Latimer. Indiana Hoosier, Super Bowl champ 2015 with the Broncos with the first down. Every defense has a weak point. And so the reason you hear offense coordinator Robert Ford call certain plays, he says, okay, I'm going to attack the weak point of what I think they're going to run. Revamped offensive line. They have played fantastic. Is this picked off? Arlington with the takeaway. And it's Devontae Bosby. He had a pick six, and the season opener comes up with his second interception. But wait, we're saying incomplete pass. I'm sure this is going to get Dean Blandino and his crew talking. Low end ball down the best low. See, I got the ball hands apart. Right there, right there. See the hands apart, great call. Yeah. We're good, we're, cl we're clear, we're clear. We got ball on the ground between the hands. So, Dean, you said great call, complimenting your crew. This is a huge opportunity for these officials as well. No question. And, and here's what we talk, told the coaches, is that on a play like this, when it's reviewable, we're going to be looking at this. They certainly can challenge it. I think Coach Stoops is going to challenge this. But we're going to be looking at this, and if there's any doubt, we'll stop the game. But that's the best look. You've got the hands apart. The, the nose of the ball is going to touch the ground and he doesn't have control. Thanks, team. We'll let you get back to work. Thank you. Frank, he's challenging it. So this was also a point of emphasis by Dean Blandino in, in the last week. And he told us they're going to review plays like this. So it's almost telling the coach like Bob Stoops, keep that challenge in your pocket because we've looked at it. But even if you even if they say they're going to review it, you still know this is a momentum shifting play. Devontae Bosby right, had the game ceiling play in week one to make the win. He's got six years of experience. Pass has been confirmed. Arlington is charged with their first time out half, and they lose the challenge to the remainder of the year. So they do challenge it, and that does two things, right? Tight game, you lose a timeout, and you lose the challenge. But it's still worth it. That's a game but changing. Is it, but is it worth it? I think it is. But I think if, it is. If the VP of officiating has made the point that we're going to look at these plays, and they obviously looked at it, haven't you just wasted a challenge? No, because the Orlando Guardians were already running a play right now. So, okay, I need you to take another look at that. You may not have seen all the angles. Even if you say you did, I'm going to risk it. <laughs> Lynch, new life, but brought down. Relentless effort by Willie Taylor from Eastern Kentucky. This man is still draft eligible. He just wrapped up his final season this fall. Willie Taylor's a star. He has every pass rush move in the book. You saw that. He starts up field and goes inside. If you go watch him last week, you see moves like a long arm using one hand to run the, the offensive lineman back. You see a side swipe. This dude is a star in the making. He had a sack last week as well. As DC said, that's what you look for in an edge rusher. Third and forever for Paxton Lynch. Good, loud crowd here in Arlington. Lynch skirting the line of scrimmage, pump fake. And here we go, it's 449 left. That scramble, does it make you think about going for it? And the answer is no. You hear that punt safe call. That's that's defensive coordinator Jay Hayes saying, hey, they may fake it. I get it. They have the punt <laughs> formation out. Keep our defense out there. We're going to run a safe coverage. Don't change personnel. Defense, everybody eyes on that punter, eyes on your work. This is Mac Brown out of Ole Miss with the punt. Johnny Townsend was hurt. Last week on a roughing call. Fair catch caught. It takes a friendly bounce for Orlando. 
And so Arlington, they're going to be backed up. That's as good as it gets for Mac Brown. We've been talking about the punts, exactly what you're trying to do if you're a punter in this league. All the punts we've seen have been usually between the middle of the field so they don't go out of bounds. Well, that punt, it took a friendly bounce. Taylor. Coach, why did you guys decide not to go for it there on the fourth down? Well, we're down one. It's, it's four and a half minutes left in the game. Defense is playing well. Not their last drive. Figure we could stop them and get in field position. Thank you. Well, T-Mac, thank you. They got the field position. They got the timeouts. But will Kyle Sloter stay hot like he was last drive, going six of eight for 52 yards in his first touchdown? Kyle Slaughter is doing what he's brought here to do, which is control the ball, control the tempo of the game, make the proper adjustments, and keep it from the other team. From the 10, Davion Smith, ground and pound. This is the position the Renegades wanted to be in. Lowell, Sacho, four-minute offense right here, trying to close out the game. Sacho, you've been here. Yeah, when you mean four-minute offense, means the clock's going to run. You don't want the other team to get the ball. And so especially in the XFL rules where the clock still runs on incompletions out of bounds until two minutes, you can run a lot of clock off of the, off of the game. Nice snap. Sloter handles it with ease. There's Vaughn. He almost spun out of that tackle. It's going to set up a third and medium. Hey, third down. Take your time in the huddle. So Hayes wants him to milk that clock. Biggest defensive play coming up for Tony Carter and his Guardians defense. Fire zone, that's that single high. So they're going to look, maybe attack the seams again like they did on the last play. Play clock at three. Sloter, nice and easy. Vaughn's again. Tyler Vaughn says a go ahead touchdown, and he's got a huge first down. Stay alive. Stay alive. Hey, leave uh, Nate in here. I want to. So the clock continues to move even on an out of bounds play until it gets to the two minute warning. Then it will be the college approach. They will have to take the snap before the two minute warning. Davion Smith, the Michigan Wolverine, not much on first down. And will Orlando call a timeout before the two minute warning? I believe they have and they do. Leave them over there. Coming up next over on ESPN2 and ESPN Deportes, the San Antonio Brahmas and Houston Roughnecks round out the XFL Week 3 schedule at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, also available on ESPN+. Plus. The Roughnecks, the favorites, according to Vegas, to win it all. Ben DiNucci was clutch on fourth and short last night in Vegas, connected with Josh Gordon, former NFL star for the game-winning touchdown. Michael Drozov with a pick six, second of the season. DC stays undefeated. They edge out A.J. McCarron and St. Louis, who dropped their first game of the year. Second and eight for Kyle Sloter. Sloter will keep. Here's the pursuit and a fine job in the open field by Tigre Scales. And that will take us to the two minute warning. Another huge third down approaching with Arlington clinging to the one point lead as Orlando looks for their first win of the year. What's your favorite part of a Kit Kat bar? The chocolate? Week four doubleheaders, Saturday on FX and Sunday on ESPN2. Arlington with a one-point lead. Biggest play of the night coming up, but first, here's Fitz. Coach, two minutes. 
Your thoughts right now, how do you feel? Yeah, I just need one more first down and we're we're gonna be home free, but we gotta get it. This will be a tough one to pick up. What do you want to see right here? Good execution and poor defense. <laughs> Low. Sammy's looking for both. <laughs> One of the all-time greats, Bob Stoops, the only returning head coach for the XFL in 2020. Ten Big 12 titles to his name at OU. Third and 11. Alert the pick route. He's telling Mike number 13, hey, stay outside. They might try to pick you. Have outside leverage. Vaughn's in the red sleeves has been the go-to target in the second half. Going that way to Smith. Smith stopped around the 30-yard line. And so Orlando will get the football back. They've got one timeout remaining, and they also have the benefit of the college rules inside two minutes. See the contact. He almost stays up, but that, that backside is down, down by contact. Marquette King. The most experienced player in terms of NFL time on the Arlington roster is going to pump this away. Orlando has called their timeout, so they will stop the clock with 152 left. But with these rules, with the clock stopping until the ball is reset after first downs and incompletions and out of bounds plays. You're feeling pretty good with this clock situation. This is your, this is your typical two-minute situation. The clock will stop out of bounds. And actually, it's atypical because it has the college rule where after a first down, the clock will also stop. Watch the ball. Watch the ball. Hey. Justin Rogers is back deep to return. Fourth and five, you hear them saying, watch the ball. Why? <laughs> if you jump off sides, a five-yard penalty equals a first down. So watch the ball. You don't have to be early. This could be a game-changing play. King with 84 NFL games under his belt. He's got a booming leg on display. This is going to back up Rodgers to the 10 yard line. What a kick. Rodgers spinning, trying to stay up to the 25, and that's how it's done by Marquette King. Eleven Bulldog. That's a personnel. One tight end, one running back. Bulldog. That's the kind of running back. Orlando. Let's go. Shoot nine. Guardians trying to set up Borregales for a game winner with 139 left. Lynch has been fantastic. 214 yards and electric on the ground. That's complete to Thomas. Clock will keep going. That's Borregales, the former Lou Groza Award winner at Miami, given to the top kicker in college football. Lynch pressure from the backside. He's going to go down. Sacked. And Orlando has been stout on a revamped offensive line until that moment. Well, it's Will Clark out of West Virginia. Boyko, the new offensive lineman, was late. He didn't know the snap count. He was late. Well, he just got here about two or three days ago. That's how that play was made. It is four down territory, no doubt about it, and a flag. We have 10 second option rule. We got false start 77. So we're going to have options for it. We're going to want it. Wow. False start? Layup, Seattle. Throw it to number hey. Hey. While the clock was running, false start, number 77 of the offense. This is a five-yard penalty. This is also a 10-second subtraction. That is a huge blow, and this is what Terrell Buckley has seen through the first two weeks of the year. Can't get out of their own way. Third and 13 for Paxton Lynch. This one is close, though. They can taste it. That has not been the case in the first two weeks with a 33-12 loss to Houston and a 30-12 loss to San Antonio. This is where all the stuff you talk about in practice, about belief, about one play at a time, you, all right, let's do it. you keep everything from falling off the rails.
Lynch taking a shot, sideline, up and over, Lance Lenore makes the catch. There's life for Orlando. We heard when Robert. Okay, okay, we okay. Twins left. And that is Josh Hawkins down. Hawkins is the highest graded player on the Arlington defense, according to Pro Football Focus. When Robert Ford was calling this play, I heard, we heard him say throw it to number, and it cut out. It sounded like he was going to say to number four, Lance Lenore oh. recently acquired within the last week. Oh, that's awful, though, that we see Hawkins at the same time grabbing his right knee. Lance Lenore, an undrafted free agent, signed by Dallas in 2017. Out of Western Illinois, the catch of the night. But right now the concern is Josh Hawkins. The corner out of East Carolina is down in pain. Hawkins. A three-year veteran of the NFL, 32 games, including three starts, the last with the Eagles in 2018. Hey, Lowell, Sam Hawkins also stepped away from football for a year, and he, he's been doing some acting. Actually, has been in a few films in Hollywood and then came back to the game because of the XFL to have that one last shot at going to the NFL. But, you know, he, he has a life away from football right now. But, I mean, you talk to anybody on this Arlington team, they love 28. And he has been awesome, Fitz. He's the leader of that defense. I was talking to him on the field before the game, and he talked about how he leads his guys and guides his guys. This will be a tough loss for Arlington. But you Correct. see 40, 42 on the clock, 42 on the clock. So that's Dean Blandino addressing the clock situation, bringing that back to 42 seconds. So what's happening right now, Ball Dean? So we actually had a really good look on the low end. So the pass was actually incomplete. The receiver went to the ground. The ball came loose, hit the ground, and then he regained control of it. We had a real good look on the low end zone. Did not see that one. Awesome job by you and your crew, Dean. And one of the new rules in the XFL, and Dean just talked about it, if there's a game-altering play within those final two minutes, it can be reviewed. Lance Lenore thought he had the catch of the night. Let's take a look. So two hands. Oh, the ball comes out just at the last moment. Great job by Dean Blandino and his crew to catch that one. Now this is the final shot. Make it or go home 0-3. Do the Guardians have some fourth down magic? Lynch going deep. Sideline. Is it caught? Out of bounds into the hands of Charleston Rambo, but Lynch let him out of bounds just a little bit on a tough throw. You got a feel for this Orlando team. So close, Sam. So close. This is a fourth down. You see the catch, but he couldn't get that one leg in bounds. In the XFL, you only need one foot, one hand, one body part, a knee, anything in bounds. It looks a little close. So I'm sure Dean will be reviewing it. So that is Rambo, and that, I mean, to me, clearly, that looks like the foot comes down out of bounds. It is the college rule when it comes to... Frank, hold it up. Hold it up for a second. Receptions, it just needs to be one foot inbounds, and Dean Blandino saying, hold play. They're going to get this right. So I'm on this high end zone when I've got a right foot down, but by the time he gains control, I've got both feet coming off the ground. And then we've got a body part hitting out of bounds. So I got incomplete. I'm going to look at one more angle here, which is my far handheld. And again, when he gets control, I've got both feet off the ground. And then we've got a good ruling of incomplete. We're clear, Frank. We're clear. 
I mean, Dean, we're talking just inches right there. Victory formation as Kyle Sloter moves to 1-0 and as the starting quarterback of the Arlington Renegades. They were just looking for some sort of spark. It's not a lot on the scoreboard, but it is a win for Bob Stu. And that's all that mattered. It didn't matter about how you got the job done. It was simply about getting the job done. That's what we saw in this game. And Sloter in the second half when it mattered the most. 10 of 12, 84 yards, and a touchdown. But you got to give credit to Terrell Buckley and Paxton Lynch and the way they fought. Let's throw it down to the sideline and Fitz. Thanks, Lowe. Coach Stoops, describe this one for us. Man, that was a, a barn burner, right? 10-9. But we hung on and won, made enough plays to win. That's always what matters. And, uh, you know, Coach Buckley does a nice, great job with his team. And uh, anyway, we made enough plays to win. What did you see from your quarterback? You made that change going to Kyle Sloter today. What did you see? I know it was only 10 points, but you got the W. Yeah, he, he did a lot of good things. And I, I think as much as anything as a whole team, We've got to help whatever quarterback's in there. We've got to do more as coaches, do more as a team, protecting them. And, uh, but Kyle did a nice job overall. Through three weeks now, what have you learned about this team that you didn't know going into week one? Well, I, I think I knew it. They, they, there's a, it's a really high character group of guys. They're really great to be around every day, and they're going to play to the end every, every game. And fortunately, they did that today, and we did enough uh, good things to win. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks, Ian. Appreciate it. Thanks, yes, sir. T-Mac. Thank you. Here with Kyle Sloter, 1-0 as the starting quarterback. How would you assess what you felt today? Yeah, you know, it's always fun to come out here and play a, a game that you grew up as a kid dreaming of these moments like this and being with these guys. So um, a lot of fun out here, uh, a lot of emotions. And, you know, watching uh, one of my other friends, Paxton Lynch, try to lead his team on a last second uh, or last minute comeback right there, I was sweating. So glad to get the win. What do you think helped your offense get into a rhythm today that you guys haven't been able to do the rest of the year? Yeah, I think uh, in the fourth quarter, we started throwing the ball, um, which, you know, it's nice to not be in third and eights. And I, I feel like early in the game, we kept getting ourselves in the third and eights, third and sevens. And, you know, when we started throwing the ball because we needed to, we were able to gash them and uh, get some yards and score a touchdown. So I think we just have to be probably a little bit more balanced, but that's something we'll talk about this week and we'll come back better next week. You just told me before we went on camera that you still felt like there was so much more out there. What do you feel like you can improve upon now that you did get the win as a starter? Yeah, you know, it's it's the same thing that I just said is really just letting it fly. I feel like we were too, uh, at times, too complacent. And I feel like, you know, when we get some of these guys, I mean, we got great receivers, great tight ends, great running backs, put them in space. I think we got to do a little bit more of that. We tried to play power football with these guys. We thought we could come in here and bully them a little bit more than we did. They did a great job up front. Um, so I think we just got to probably air it out a little bit more. But I think, you know, everybody's on the same page and we're going to keep moving forward and getting better. From your perspective, your defense there on that final drive, what stood out? Yeah, you know, I, I think we have the best defense in the league. Um, you know, we as an offense, the last couple games and this game have put them in tough positions. Um, it's hard as a defense when your offense isn't moving the ball, we're not scoring points and all that kind of stuff. They've kept us in ball games, so we're really grateful to have them. I think they're the best in the league, and I think that uh, once we get rolling as an offense, we're going to be a much better team. Appreciate your time. Yep, Thank you. It. Fitzy? I'm over here with Donald Payne, starting linebacker, signal caller for the Renegades. D Payne, he just said that he believes you guys are the best defense in the league. What have you learned about your teammates through three weeks? Man, we're just resilient, man. You know, no matter what, no matter what comes our way, no matter how many times we have to go on the field as a defense, you know, we always had that mindset, it's another opportunity to go out there and make a play. You know, and we made some big plays throughout this entire game, getting the ball for our offense. And you know, that's that's great words from Kyle. And you know, it's it's our job to go out and prove it every week that we are the best defense in the league. Take us on to the field that last drive. Oh, that last drive, it, I mean, we sat down to each other, hey, look, we want that win bonus. We want the win, <laughs> you know. At the end of the day, it, come, it comes down to us, and we got to make a play. We got to make a stop. We got a huge sack, backed them up, and we had a huge play uh, by Hawk, you know. Hopefully he's, hopefully he's not injured too bad. Huge play by Hawk, and then a huge play, uh, Darren Evans, backup corner, comes in the game, gets him, throw a goal ball on him, first play in and incomplete pass out of bounds. So we just resilient. We got a great, you know, we so deep on our, every position that whoever come in the game, we know what we're doing. We practice hard. We practice our butts off. So, you know, anybody who comes in the game, they know what to do. You've been in the National Football League. Heck, a, a few years ago, you were third in the NFL in special teams tackles. What is this moment like for you right now trying to get back to being the 53rd guy, not the 54th? Man, 
got to prove them wrong, you know. The people who believe in you, I love to prove them right because I know they believe I, I should be at the highest level. And the people who don't believe in me at this point, it's my job to prove them wrong. So this is just another opportunity to do that. And it's on a national stage, so it's plenty of eyes on me. It's plenty of eyes on all of us, so it's our job to go out and make those plays. Uh, you're a Stetson Hall of Famer. You five over 500 tackles at Stetson. You're the first Stetson player to ever play in the National Football League. I got right across the street is Jake DeGrom, <laughs> also Stetson. Who who gets more credit at Stetson when it comes to what you've done? Is it Jake DeGrom hey. or you? Hey, look, I've never been on campus with Jake DeGrom at the same time. So if we ever back there together, we're going to see who they like a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Lowell, Sancho. Hey, this much is clear. When that happens, <laughs> Lunch is on the ground <laughs> with a contract that dude just signed. So Arlington's able to hold on. They moved to two and one. This is so intriguing because coming up next, you're going to see Houston and San Antonio. And, and Wade Phillips is probably hanging out saying, OK, wait a second. We just heard Arlington say we're the best defense in the XFL. He's getting ready to unleash those pass rushers on San Antonio. But if San Antonio can pull off an upset, you're looking at two teams at two and one in the XFL South. That would be Houston and in this case the Arlington Renegades and that's the, the that's been the impressive part about this game for Arlington we've seen them kind of back and forth you've seen man these big turnovers on offense but then on defense as well then now they found their rhythm with a new quarterback and so there's a lot of confidence brimming and you feel it when you talk to the players and you see it when you watch them play with this Arlington Renegades team they think they're the best and so far they're playing very much like it what do they call Bob Stoops big game Bob here he is in the locker room Give us the lead. Smitty did a hell of a job on that. On that getting out here. Uh, and then defense, great job there at the end, four and out uh, to steal the game. So uh, it's going to take that, right? We, we've talked about it. All these games are tight and close for the most part and go down to the last series or so. So we just remember that as we move forward, all right? Great job, though. Great job. Got that bonus check coming. <laughs> all right. Let's all – let's just stay on our – no, my bad. Yeah, let's all just uh, go go ahead, Willie. Uh, Will you? you uh, Our Father, Lord, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Getting that bonus check. <laughs> Think about what we've seen in the third week of the XFL, right? Last night, we saw that thrilling matchup with Vegas and Seattle. And Seattle is down to a fourth and two. We get Josh Gordon with a game-winning touchdown, right? Earlier, we saw St. Louis in real trouble against D.C. St. Louis comes back and once again has that fourth and 15 for the second time this season. They don't get it, but it's drama down to the finish. And we have that once again here the game is on the line it was in the hands of Paxton Lynch and they had shots I mean they're going to look back at this and say two plays on that last drive we were so close to having a real shot at getting the first one they played three quarters and some change of great football then there were a few plays at the very end you saw a sack given up you saw a penalty going back to some of those old ways but there's a lot to build on up build off of for this Orlando Guardians football team you saw them cleaned up the offensive line they did clean up the penalties now it's just believing you can win Hey, I love every single one of y'all, bro. Hey, tonight, if y'all ain't got something burning inside to let y'all know that we ain't no reason to hit, we can't go 7-3 to the way we play tonight. If we caught them mistakes, you feel me? Let's come back to work Tuesday, bro. Let's hey, I got some burning inside, but I know y'all do too. I seen out there in that grass, and it made me happy, bro, because I'm mad because we lost, but I'm happy because I know we're going to go win. We're about to go 7-3. We're about to go. All right. Orlando Guardians. Stand on. And that was great. That's Savion Patton there. He was the one that had those emotional words that we can run the table if we play the way we played tonight. They need to clean up some things, but that's great to hear that the positivity is still there. They're believing. It's, in, it's still early in the season. I understand that it's been three games, and you're looking at your record, you're saying, man, we're 0-3, but you can still run the table. You, you played with a team that believes they're the best in your division. You played with them all the way up until the last second, a game of inches that you barely didn't win that game by a dropped pass, and then also by a, a ball that you were barely out of bounds. And so you know you can win, but winning in football is contagious. 
coaches. Once you find those players yeah. and the players who find ways to win, then all of a sudden you believe you can win and then you won't make those mistakes that you made before. And so just like winning is contagious, losing can be contagious as well. First time this season that Orlando has played just one quarterback in a game. It was Paxton Lynch from start to finish. Arlington, they went with Kyle Sloter. They, they gave Plitt a chance the first two games. He played well. So have both these quarterbacks now established themselves as the guys for their teams? It's still early to say established because we did hear from, from Terrell Buckley that we're still evaluating our quarterbacks. But I could say that Paxton Lynch, you could say he established it. Now, on the other hand, you still want to say, is Kyle Slaughter our guy moving forward? We found ways to win. He didn't turn the ball over. But you want to make sure that he's your guy moving forward. It's a, it's still early in the season, but three games are three games. And so, Slaughter made all the plays necessary to win the game, but you heard him say himself, I want to air it out more. Let's see what we can do. Let's get our players making plays in space. That's when this thing will be established for the Arlington Renegades. So, credit to him and, and Tyler Vons who made the catch, right? And that, at that point, tied the game up. Because right before that, Paxton Lynch and Orlando, they just drove the length of the field and they were able to get a touchdown and miss the extra point, which is another issue with Orlando right now. 0 for 5 in extra points. They decided to go for 2, and, or excuse me, one from the two yard line and ultimately that's the difference of the game because Arlington ties the game on the Vaughn's touchdown. They line up just needing those two yards for the go ahead score and they got it with Smith. And some of the tough part about this about this game is that no longer is it just scoring touchdowns. It's what do you do after those touchdowns? Do you <laughs> it's go not automatic. Bingo. Do you go for one? Do you go for two? Do you go for three? And then you usually draw plays that you're going to say okay if we need a two point conversion we'll do this play or that play. But if you don't get that one point, it's not an extra point anymore. It's not a field goal. It's a play you have to run to score. If you don't get it, that's the difference between winning and losing. And so that's what we're seeing. We're seeing Orlando say, okay, we got to find ways to get that one yard yeah. or get those, excuse me, get that, get those two yards or those five yards. If we need a three-point play, get those 10 yards on this play. And once again, Arlington with the defense, eight takeaways on the season. That's doing some work for the Arlington Renegades. And our guys working audio, they were working from start to finish, bringing you the sights and the sounds. This is what it looked like and sounded like. Now, I, I really don't get that. He deferred, so we get to choose which way we want to receive the ball. Great series, D. Great series right there, D. That's a way to get pressure. Oh, oh man, no. We like that. DB, hey, DB, hey, 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 we like that. We like that. We like that. Man, we like that, man. Hey, hey. Victory? That was a good one, man. Good one, good. Congratulations. Yeah, Congratulations. Appreciate, appreciate you, bro. You know that. Stay up. Stay up. And that's what it's about right there. Bob Stoops telling Terrell Buckley, stay up. Yeah, and that, that's a piece of it. And I think Terrell Buckley didn't need to hear that because what we heard from him during this week was, I'm going to remind my guys how good they are. He actually made a highlight tape of all their good plays. And sometimes you don't need someone railing into you saying, we didn't do this, you didn't do that. Sometimes it's necessary. Other times it's saying, hey, we are close. You heard Savion Patton say, we are close. He made a huge play. We saw Jacoby Jones make a huge play. So many players are making plays in these games, and you realize you're one play away. And so all of a sudden you need that fire in your heart he talked about to go back there and practice a little bit harder, maybe stay out a little bit longer to be the one player that makes the difference in the game to help your team win. It comes down to one point sometimes <laughs> or one play. Case in point, this game. We had two games before this this week that had more than 50 points combined. We get 19. Hopefully you took the under. Final thoughts coming up. That is the deep snapper for Arlington, Antonio Ortiz. He's got some fans up here. He played his college ball at TCU, so even the long snapper getting some love here after that one-point win. Arlington moving to 2-1 and one after taking down Orlando by one single point. So in the south, we've got Houston at 2-0. and oh. Arlington now moves up to 2-1. and one. San Antonio at 1-1. One and one. So if San Antonio can get the win against Houston, we are looking at 
a tie atop the South, and that would be Arlington and Houston at two and one. Meanwhile, in the North, DC is three and zero. Oh. Electric atmosphere up there. The fans <laughs> have bought in. The beer snake was back. Security didn't take it away, so they were happy. And then last night in Vegas, it was a really good scene and a great comeback as well. Seattle was a team that a lot of people had high expectations from because you have June Jones as the offensive coordinator, Ben DiNucci, former Cowboys quarterback behind center and then this man Josh Gordon who is all everything in the NFL at receiver and on a fourth and two with 115 left they hook up for the game Danucci took a hit Gordon made the catch and man Danucci was popped I mean, that's going to fire you up, right, Sam? So that was the highest scoring XFL game this season, 30 to 26. Danucci, 377 passing yards and four touchdowns. So the raw numbers, completions, yards look great. Turnovers has still been an issue with Danucci. And we did see that. Even in the win yesterday, we saw an interception from Danucci. We saw another turnover. But one thing that we are seeing is the ability to get the ball in your playmaker's hands. Josh Gordon specifically, that was fourth and two. He threw it up. That's a 65-yard game-winning touchdown. Josh Gordon backpedaled for a few yards before he looked at the defenders on the ground and walked into the end zone. And so Ben Danucci is a gunslinger. He's getting the ball into his playmakers, and that's what we're seeing about the Seattle Sea Dragons offense. We're going to see a great receiver on the sidelines coming up in Heinz Ward with San Antonio. The Brahmas are about to take on the Houston Roughnecks. You're going to see that over on ESPN2. With Houston, we know about the edge rushers. That defense is electric. The guy we're talking about on the walkover is their quarterback, Brandon <laughs> Silvers. I mean, that guy has a rocket for an arm. And we've talked about him being maybe the best quarterback so far in the XFL. And obviously, they have it, they're undefeated right now. And so, Brandon Silvers... It is, is, at least his coaches described him as a gunslinger, but more so you're hearing his offensive coordinator call the plays through him and give him all the information he needs to make the right decisions. And so that's what I love about Silvers. He's fearless. He makes the right play. And even on an incomplete pass or maybe an interception, he goes right back with the exact same confidence. Winners and losers everywhere, not just on the field, but off the field as well. When we take a look at betting and the situation there, this was an eight-point spread, by far the largest largest spread in a game in the XFL this season. So if you took Arlington to cover, you didn't get it done. Orlando was able to cover because they only lost by a single point. And you look at the over-unders, the totals, I mean, we've been going way over in week number three. So week number one, it was over. It was more under in week two, and so far through the first two games at least, the over, that was hitting. Teams are still changing. Teams are still evolving. In Orlando, we thought they, they weren't so great. Well, they made some changes, and so now they're getting better. And so I wouldn't bet against Orlando right now. Even though their record looks like they're 0-3, they feel like one of those teams that can turn this thing around. A lot of people betting on the Houston Roughnecks because that's the team that didn't start the season as the favorite, according to our friends in Vegas. But as soon as they won their season opener against this Orlando team, they jumped up to the favorites in the XFL. Heinz Ward, ultimate competitor. He's going to try to change all of that. But the Roughnecks with the win move to 3-0. and oh. Meanwhile, here in Arlington, the Renegades win by a single point. They move to two and one. Orlando, meanwhile, 0 and three. For Sam Ocho and our entire crew, I'm Lowell Galindo. Thank you so much for watching the XFL. Next up, Houston and San Antonio.